I'm going to gavel uh, regular meeting number 17 to order. May we now have the playing of the national anthem. Councilmember Tyson, would you please lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilmember. This evening, Council is pleased to have Reverend Judy Austin from Woodland Christian Church here to pray with us. Pastor. Welcome to council. Thank you and good evening. Um, let us pray. Creator, sustainer, and giver of life. The one who is known by many names and the one who is beyond all names. First, this evening, we begin by giving you thanks for this day and all of its blessings. On this afternoon, as we gather here today as servants, and as citizens of the city of Columbus, we pray that we are all ever mindful of opportunities to render service to our fellow citizens and to this community. Gracious one, on this day, we seek your help with the affairs at hand. We ask that you bless us as we continue to seek your wisdom, your guidance, your courage, and your strength. Be with counsel in their deliberations and help them to be wise in their decisions that they make for the good of all of those who have placed their trust and confidence in this leadership. Give them insight to lead with integrity that their decisions may reflect what is right and good. As counsel sits here today to, to do the work, we pray that the spirit of life, the spirit of love, the spirit of community, the spirit of justice will give them patience to be compassionate and helpful toward one another, to listen and to know when it's best to remain quiet. Give them clarity, give them knowledge to make decisions that are good for this city, this city and this citizenry. Give them the capability to live and be present in the moment. Give them the understanding of the embattled individuals in our city who are struggling and the willingness to do something about it. Give council the perspective to see the bigger picture. Give them the potential to change what they can change and to do what they can do to make our city a better place. And today, while we pray for peace, we recognize that peace is nice, but justice is required. Peace is not disagreement. Peace is not hate. Peace is not discord. Peace is not disharmony. Peace is not war. Peace is not murder. Peace is not justice. We pray for justice in all that we do and all that we deliberate on. And all of these things we pray in the name of all that we hold sacred and holy, all that we hold to be good, all that we hold to be right, 
and all that we hold to be true. May it be so. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much uh, for, for that prayer. Uh, certainly needed uh, this day. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President <clears throat> Harden. This week's communications received by the city clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the bulletin. Are there any other communications to be read into the record? Not this time. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there resolutions or, or uh, updates from members of council, starting with President Pro Tem? Uh, no, thank you, Council President. Thank you, President Pro Tem. Uh, council Member Mitch Brown. Nothing this evening, sir. Thank you, sir. Council Member Dorns. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, no resolutions tonight, but one announcement. Uh, I want to remind everyone that Council's Rules and Reference Committee, chaired by you, uh, will be holding a public hearing virtually tomorrow night at 6 p.m. to hear from those nominated to be on Columbus's Civilian Review Board. Uh, each nominee will have three minutes uh, to speak about their interest and uh, desire to serve on that board. Uh, and members of the public will also have an opportunity to speak uh, to the group and to council as well on this topic. Uh, any residents who want to provide testimony via WebEx during that hearing, uh, I asked to email my legislative aide, Kevin McCain. His email is kbmccain at columbus.gov by noon tomorrow uh, to request a WebEx speaker slip. Uh, folks can also submit written testimony to the, the same email address if they like to do it that way as well. Uh, once again, the, this hearing will be taking place tomorrow uh, Tuesday, April 20th at 6 p.m. via WebEx. Uh, this will also be uh, available via Council's Facebook and YouTube pages. Um, and that is all I have this evening, uh, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Dorns, uh, for that announcement. Council Member Favor. Thank you, Council President Harden. Uh, tonight I have two resolutions. The first one is uh, 066X-2021 to recognize the week of April 18th to April 24th, 2021 as National Student Leadership Week in Columbus and to commend Youth to Youth International for their drug prevention advocacy program, leadership efforts and support of Central Ohio Youth. National Student Leadership Week is an annual theme based week dedicated to recognizing and supporting the vital role of student leaders. Since its origin stemming from a US presidential proclamation in 1972, NSLW has been a national celebration of students sponsored by the National Honor Society, National Junior Honor Society, and National Student Council. This year, students have had to use their creativity, perseverance, and positivity to overcome challenges they have never seen before. Although our current environment is challenging, many of our young people continue to step up to leadership and advocacy within their schools and community. Youth to Youth is a drug prevention program for middle and high school students founded in 1982 and has been serving teens upwards of 50,000 teens in Central Ohio. Tonight, I'm proud to have Veda Azim with Youth to Youth to accept the resolution and to continue our efforts to uplift the voices of our students. On this, on this effort, will join me, uh, will be Council President uh, Pro Tem Elizabeth Brown. Uh, on Wednesday, April 21st, we will both be hosting a youth town hall with students from across Columbus to discuss some of the most important concerns facing our young people uh, today. This event will be hosted live on City Council Facebook and City Columbus YouTube page. Uh, are there any uh, questions, questions, comments uh, by my colleagues before I turn it over to Mr. Azim? Council Member Favor, I just wanna say thank you for your leadership and I'm really looking forward to, to the event and the students. Absolutely. Um, my, me and my team had an opportunity to uh, interact with the uh, the students uh, this past Friday, and uh, this is going to be quite a treat uh, for folks. I'm really excited uh, for you all to hear what's on the students' minds from their perspectives, uh, and uh, I, I think it's going to be a really great town hall. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Azim.
Thank you, Council Member Favor. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get this video to work. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I really, really um, appreciate um, the uh, um, the platform to um, be recognized. Um, uh, again, um, uh, you know, we, like uh, Council Member uh, Favor stated, um, a couple of my young people was actually able to <laughs> my son just threw a car from uh, the top <laughs> from the top of the thing um but uh we were actually able to communicate and uh um and speak with council member favor and uh like she said i'm really really looking forward to um the the town hall with his um uh to my knowledge youth led um, um i believe it is extremely important um for us as adults to give young people a platform to um express uh, how they feel, uh, the grievances, but also to express positivity. Um, and that's what Youth to Youth um, uh, has always done. Um, it was a program that helped me when I was in high school um, and it planted a seed in me. Um, and uh, that's why I decided to go back and do work with this program. Um, I always say that um, a, a lot of us, a, a lot of the problems that we have as, a, as adults stem from um, us not uh, being given a voice when we were young. And uh, so that's why I, I do this work and that's why, or that's why we do this work, uh, Youth to Youth, because we believe it, it's extremely important um, to have youth um, um, uh, actually drive things. Uh, and, and we can guide it as adults, but I, uh, we believe it's extremely important for youth to guide it. So again, um, thank you um, for uh, giving me this platform or giving us this platform. I'm here on behalf of uh, my entire team, um, which uh, is very, very passionate about working with the young people. So um, again, I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Azim. And um, the, the topics were selected by the students. So I think this go round, and I think we're already gearing up for part two to this conversation because there's so many things that the youth wanna talk about. Uh, but we'll be hitting on uh, violence prevention. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, mental health prevention and uh, some other good topics uh, that have been thrown out there. Of course, COVID-19 is top of mind uh, for our students as well. So definitely looking forward to this conversation uh, this upcoming uh, week. So with that, I move for adoption. Second. 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 Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Adopt it. Wonderful. And then my uh, second resolution is 0071X-2021 to recognize April 2021 as National Fair Housing Month and to commend the Columbus Realtors Association for their efforts to promote housing equality. Fair Housing Month commemorates the passage of the Fair Housing Act of 1968. The purpose of the Fair Housing Act was to put an end to inequities within the housing system and eliminate racial segregation in American neighborhoods. The law prohibits discrimination in the sale, rental, and financing of housing and requires federal, state, and local governments to proactively dismantle the discriminatory structures that hold back people of color and underserved populations from equitable access to the neighborhoods of their choice. Columbus continues to grapple with the immersed wealth gap that promotes social, racial, and economic disparities across neighborhoods. This is seen mostly clear, most clearly in our housing challenges. We are lucky to have various organizations committed to the work of advancing housing equality in our community. Tonight, I'm very proud to present the Fair Housing Month resolution to the Columbus Realtors Association. I'd like to invite Kiana Jones, president of the Columbus Realtors Association, to tell us more about their work and accept the resolution. Ms. Jones, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much, Council Member Favor, for your recognition um, of this resolution. And, you know, I humbly accept this resolution on behalf of the Columbus Realtors Association. Um, like Council Member Favor stated, my name is Kiana Jones and I'm the 2021 president. Uh, many don't know, but the uh, Columbus Realtors Association is a local chapter of the National Association of Real Estate Brokers, uh, better known as NARAB. Uh, NARAB is the oldest minority trade organization in the United States. And 
As Council Member Favor stated, we've been fighting for fair and affordable housing since 1947, and NARAB was instrumental in the uh, creation of the Fair Housing Act of 1968. And our work continues on. Uh, we've been instrumental in the creation of policies for HUD, and those, co those conversations continue on today. Um, on the local level, you know, realtors, we are realtors too. Uh, so we're like, we're just laser focused on closing that wealth gap and creating and building the generational wealth that's been denied to black families throughout the years, because it's been proven that the foundation to generational wealth is through home ownership. Uh, so to accomplish this, there are a number of divisions uh, within NARAP because we are a servant organization. Uh, we serve the underserved and the unserved. Uh, so that's what we are. We do service. Uh, so now we are proud to announce, um, I know we know about HUD certified counseling agencies throughout Central Ohio. We now have a fifth one uh, that was birthed through the NARAB Investment Division uh, called NIDHCA Columbus. Uh, so now there's a fifth agency out there serving our community uh, with regards to home ownership, credit and budgeting, personal finance. Finance, uh, and down payment assistance. Uh, so we're continuing to push for those particular policies. Uh, thank you guys for the source of income uh, legislation that has gone through because that's an area that we need to continue to fight for as well. And we'll be there with you the entire step of the way. Uh, so join us June 9th for Realtor Care Day as well. Uh, we'll be helping the underserved community as well as we try to spruce up those areas where they feel that gentrification is happening because we have a number of pillars in the community uh, that want to stay there. And we, uh, so we want to have them stay where they are at as well. So we want to build that generational wealth for them. Uh, so again, thank you, Council Member Favor. Uh, recognition of we continue to do the work. We look forward to working with council uh, to do more. Thank you so much, Ms. Jones. And I'd be remiss if I also didn't acknowledge the dynamic webinar uh, your organization hosted last week uh, entitled The State of um, Housing in Black America. Phenomenal panel of uh, professionals from all across the state of Ohio. Uh, great conversations. So I, I truly appreciate the work that you all are doing in the community and actually all, all around the state of Ohio, uh, quite frankly. Thank you for the work you're doing in fair housing. Uh, are there any uh, comments uh, on behalf of my colleagues? Yes, uh, Councilmember Tyson. Oh, Councilmember, you're on mute. But, uh, thank you, Councilmember Favor, and for bringing this resolution to this body. I want to thank Ms. Jones for her work and the organization's work um, to make sure that individuals, especially individuals of color, have the opportunity to build wealth through home ownership, um, through all the counseling, the um, to get them to a place where they can purchase a home and build that wealth. It is incredibly important that people that we have that in our community, and as you stated, that um, our wealth. Black wealth really has come from home ownership. So all the work that you're doing, thank you, kudos for um, the work and thank you, Council Member Favor. Thank you, Council Member Tyson. With that, I will move for adoption. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hardy. Adopted. Thank you so much. That is all I have this evening. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Remy. Thank you very much, Council President Harkin. I have announcements and one resolution. In November 2020, we kicked off our pilot program for the Cleaner Columbus Employment Program. At its inception, the program had two goals, provide temporary employment opportunities for the homeless, unemployed, and underemployed, and create a cleaner Columbus by collected, collecting increased amounts of litter, litter and debris in, in, in tar, target neighborhoods. The Cleaner Columbus Employment Program ran for a total of three weeks, and within that three-week period, residents employed through the program collected 53% of the total weight of litter and debris collected in all of 2019. This equates to 5,789 bags of litter and debris for a total weight of 173,670 pounds. That is 173,670 pounds of unsightly trash removed from Columbus neighborhoods. I am excited to announce that we are continuing the Cleaner Columbus program into 2021. We will launch three cohorts in 2021. 
the spring, summer, and fall. The spring cohort will begin working in Columbus neighborhoods beginning next Thursday, Tuesday, excuse me, next Tuesday, April 27th. And our partners will be the Franklinton Board of Trade, who will focus on Franklinton and Hilltop arterial roads and neighborhood entries, community development for all people, who will focus on the South Columbus arterial, arterial roads and neighborhood entries, St. Stephen's Community House, who will focus on arterial, arterial roads and neighborhood entries within the Linden community, us together, who will target arterial roads and neighborhood entries within the Northland and the Southwest Hilltop areas. And Columbus Next Gen, in partnership with In the Violence, who will focus on Near East Columbus arterial roads and neighborhood entries. The summer, the summer cohort will engage Columbus youth by serving as a summer youth employment program. There will be more information on this in the coming weeks. And the fall and cohort will again engage the homeless and under unemployed and underemployed for more information please contact cleaner columbus at columbus.gov that's cleaner columbus at columbus.gov this thursday the april 22nd and at 5 30 p.m i will host a virtual town hall to discuss the upcoming council Re residential districting commission work and answer your questions about the process to submit questions, please email crdc at columbus.gov. That's crdc at columbus.gov. You can view the town hall live on Facebook, YouTube, or the CTV channel. And then finally, I have resolution 67X 2021 to recognize and celebrate Thursday, April 22nd, 2021 as Earth Day in Columbus, Ohio. Celebrating Earth Day represents all of the hard work that has been done and will continue to be done to protect our planet and keep our family safe. Earth Day was founded by United States Senator Gaylord Nelson as an environmental teach-in first held on April 22nd, 1970. Earth Day 2021 is dedicated to restoring our Earth by preventing the coming disasters of climate change and environmental destruction. Green Columbus is a Central Ohio nonprofit organization that started the celebration, local celebration of Earth Day in 2007 and organizes the Earth Day Columbus service week every year. Since its inception, Earth Day Columbus has distributed more than 200,000 trees, helped Central Ohioans to volunteer over 150,000 hours, and resulted in more than $4.3 million worth of goods and services being donated in Central Ohio. Founded in 2008 by former mayor, Columbus Mayor Michael B. Coleman, Columbus Green Spot is a city program that inspires, educates, and recognizes households, businesses, community groups, and neighborhoods that adopt sustainable practices and recently reached 20,000 members throughout the city. Columbus City Council encourages all residents to make an Earth Day 2021 resolution and thank the many people and organizations in our community who will spend this week dedicating time to clean their neighborhoods and help our environment. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby recognize and celebrate Thursday, April 22nd, 2021 as Earth Day in Columbus, Ohio. As the Environment Chair, Betty Chair, I have had the honor of participating in numerous Earth Day events over the last few years volunteer throughout the community. Last year, the Earth Day celebration and volunteer events were canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thankfully, this year with the restrictions with restric restrictions in place, Greener Columbus, Green Columbus has proved that no matter the challenge, Central Ohio residents care about the environment. They will volunteer hours and money to plant trees, clean up litter, and more. I've invited Tamara Ricks, the service site coordinator of Green Columbus, to share more about the volunteer efforts in place this week to celebrate Earth Day 2021. Tamara, the floor is yours. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tama Ricks. Um, as Council Member Remy had mentioned, I am the Green Columbus service site coordinator for the 2021 um, Earth Day Columbus. Our executive director, um, Klaus Eckert, couldn't be here today due to a family emergency. Um, I feel honored to speak with all to all of you about Earth Day Columbus. 
At Green Columbus, we are grateful for the support from the council and the city of Columbus, as well as the Columbus Foundation, Green Funds, and Jeffrey Funds, and many of the local and national environmental organizations, such as the Arbor Day Foundation and the National Wildlife Federation. Our goal is to make it as easy and accessible for everyone to participate in Earth Day, no matter their background or resources. That is why we work to give away as much as possible for beautification projects. This year, we have distributed and planted a record number of 65,000 plus trees. We have also been handing out 6,000 pollinator plants. And in addition, our partners are converting almost 60 acres in a pollinator friendly milkweed and wildflower prairies with distributions. And thanks to Scott's miracle Grow, we are also handing out $12,000 worth of mulch and topsoil. Earth Day Columbus is truly a community effort. I'm lucky to be part of a community of thousands of people within Central Ohio, making it the largest volunteer driven service event around Earth Day in the nation. Um, to, to do. Thanks to everyone who's involved in Earth Day Columbus, Julie Smiley with the Friends of the Lower Olentangy Watershed who coordinates trees, seeds, and plant distributions, Derek Holohan from Keep Columbus Beautiful, Council Member Remy and Lucy and Jeff from his office, Council Member Elizabeth Brown and all Council Members who have supported us in the last 14 years. If you've already volunteered this year for Earth Day, I thank you. If you're interested in participating, it's not too late. You can visit EarthDayColumbus.org and click on volunteer to find volunteer opportunities. And lastly, we run two tree nurseries in Linden and Hilltop, where we, we will grow almost 3,000 um, three gallon container trees. As part of the urban um, forest master plan in Earth Day, I want to invite all council members to help us transplant the trees at our nurseries in Hilltop and Linden on Arbor Day. Um, this will be Friday the 30th in the afternoon and Saturday, May 1st in the morning, and we will send out more details to Lucy and Jeff at Council Member Remy's office. Uh, again, thank you from everyone at Green Columbus, our deepest gratitude for your support and for recognizing Earth Day in Columbus 2021. Thank you so much, Emma. I appreciate your help and uh, certainly a big thank you to Klaus Eckert, um, who was not it had an emergency this evening for all the work he's done in this community as executive director of Green Columbus. Also, thank you to Keep Columbus Beautiful for being a great partner to this work and providing cleanup supplies for many of the volunteer sites. I'd also like to invite David Celebrezzi, the program manager for Columbus Green Spot, to speak to this important green city work done throughout the year. Um, David, the floor is yours. Great, thank you Council Member Remy and Council Members and happy Earth Week and Earth Day to you and everybody watching. Uh, I love this time of year because there is a renewed sense of optimism around the environment. Neighbors and neighborhoods come together to celebrate the environment, work towards clean air, clean water, cleaner soil. If this doesn't happen in your neighborhood, uh, give me a call and, and we'll work with you to make sure it happens. You can, or email me at greenspot at columbus.gov. So uh, Columbus Green Spot, it is the main program the city reaches to the community on actions they can take to live more sustainably. Uh, Green Spot is housed in the Department of Public Utilities and we're membership based, but it is free to join and free to be a member. In fact, our members get really cool things like they're eligible for a $50 rebate on a rain barrel, native tree or native plant. If that doesn't interest you, our members have taken tours of the landfill uh, recycling facility uh, and out to a vernal pool, which is a really cool type of wetland with salamanders and fairy shrimp and things like that. Uh, they also get a welcome letter from Mayor Ginther, and they get their own electronic dashboard in which they can track their sustainability journey. Uh, just three bullet points on some of the larger savings our Green Spot Universe has seen. Uh, $13 million, 145 million gallons of water saved, 41 million pounds of CO2 reduced. Uh, we have an advisory board uh, and they are working on a number of projects including member engagement uh, we have a webinar series called the green spot conversations going on right now uh, they promote tree plantings uh, osu student engagement business engagement and more so our 2030 goals is to reach 40,000 members we're a little over 20,000 right now and to expand our membership program green opportunities as well as our neighborhood engagement so specifically, a couple of things that folks can do, no matter what time of year it is, is uh, turn off lights when they leave a room, uh, turn off the water when they brush their teeth, switch to LED bulbs, uh, purchase items that are made from recycled materials. 
So those are just a few of the dozens of ideas we have to go green. Some are easy, some are a lot more challenging. Uh, we also have resources on our website under the resident resources section and a sustainable business class and resource section. Uh, that also leads me to businesses of all sizes are welcome to join. Uh, Green Spot, we, got, we uh, coordinate a sustainability, uh, a sustainable business course uh, where businesses can learn um, how to do uh, a lot of different things in a greener way. Kind of covers the different aspects of sustainability. So you can learn more by visiting uh, www. Well, excuse me, www.columbusgreenspot.org. And just want to thank you again for this opportunity to speak on Greenspot and to give a shout out to all of our members who are watching. So thank you, Councilmember Remy and Council. Thank you, David. We appreciate it. Congratulations on twenty thousand. Look forward to thirty thousand in a couple of years, and of course, four thousand by twenty thirty. Uh, I want to remind viewers that if you're interested in volunteering for Earth Day, please visit greencbus.org. That's greencbus.org. And then, of course, uh, want to make sure everybody uh, signs up for become a Green Spot member so we can hit that 30,000 number in the next couple of years uh, by going to, it was greenspot.org, right, David? Because I have Green columbusgreenspot.org correct got it yeah okay i had the long version which would be the old way to do it columbus.gov slash green spot are there any questions or colleagues from my or any questions or comments from my colleagues this evening Robert? seeing none i move for adoption second clerk please call the roll brown brown doran's favor remy tyson president hart adopted Thank you very much and happy Earth Week, everybody. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilmember. Happy Earth Week. Thank you for that resolution. Councilmember Tyson. Thank you, President Harden. Yes, I have um I have uh, one resolution and I have two announcements. The first re the resolution is 62 X-2021. It is to proclaim the week of April the 18th through the 24th as a National Crime Victims Rights Week. Um, and again, to proclaim the week of April the 18th to the 24th as National Crime Victims Rights Week in the state of Columbus, remembering crime victims recognizing the Columbus Care Coalition and the other organizations that provide services to victims of crime. Whereas Victims Week, Victims Rights Week was the first proclaimed in 1981 by President Ronald Reagan, who recognized the need for renewed emphasis and enhanced sensitivity to the rights of victims and a challenge and change and challenge that exists today. Whereas supporting victims of crime supports and honors the experiences of victims and allows them to find autonomy and empowerment through achieving self-defined goals. And whereas each year there are more than 3 million violent victimizations, yet less than 43% of those crimes are reported to the police and only 11% of the violent victim crime victims assessed assist, assess assistance from a victim service agency. Whereas the city of Columbus created the Columbus Care Coalition to address community trauma through, the, through direct action, education, and by creating networks of providers to provide hope and healing to individuals, families, and neighborhoods experiencing trauma. Recognizing the buildup um, build up individuals and families doing a crisis to help build neighborhoods, giving people the power to help themselves and their community. Whereas the National Crime Victims Rights Week is an important time for individuals, community, communities, and our nation as a whole to support victims, build trust, and engage communities. And whereas the National Crime Victims Rights Week thinks supporting victims, building trust, and engaging communities is the goal that the city of Columbus will endorse not only during the National Crime Victims Rights Week, but throughout the year. The city will support this by continuing to offer trauma-informed victim services through the Columbus Care Coalition, making sure that victim, making sure that services can be assessed by survivors, victims of crime, and others in need. And whereas the city of Columbus recognizes the need for partnerships that support individuals and communities who are impacted by crime. With this, we want to thank Columbus Public Health, 
the Center for Family Safety and Healing, Ethiopian Tawahedo Social Services, the Deaf World Against Violence Everywhere, Columbus Preparatory Academy, the Department of Neighborhoods, Mental Health of, Mental Health of America of Ohio, the Mount Carmel Crime and Trauma Assistance Program, the Ohio Health Trauma Recovery Center, the Columbus Division of Fire, and others who assist with providing victims hope and healing to families and crime victims, as justice cannot be achieved until crime victims are provided with the services they need. So now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Columbus, this council is hereby proclaim the week of April 18th to the 24th as the National Crime Victims Rights Week in the City of Columbus, remembering crime victims, recognizing the Columbus Care Coalition and the or other organizations that provide services to victims of crime. And before I move for adoption, I'm going to ask Marion Stuckey, who manages our Columbus Care Coalition program, to say a few words. Marion, the floor is yours. Council Member Tyson, Council President Hardin, and Council Members. As Council Member Tyson said, I am Marion Stuckey with Columbus Public Health, and I work in the Neighborhood Social Services section. It has been a true honor to work with victims through the Care Coalition and with many partners over the years. Being a victim of a crime can truly be one of the hardest and the most traumatic experiences a person will face. The significance of National Crime Victims Rights Week is truly understanding that when you've been a victim, dealing with the emotional toll, the stigma in some cases, navigating the legal system, and trying to resume life with peace of mind while trying to regain a sense of safety are all very, very challenging tasks. We are often speaking about a total rebuilding of a person's life and really picking up all the pieces. It is critical to build trust and share resources making sure that victims know their rights throughout this process. We received a grant for National Victims of Crime Rights Week, and this grant has enabled us to help victims with a critical part of the healing journey. One way has been to prepare them to share their story and to talk about what happened to them. A trauma-informed storytelling workshop, making sure that we have worked with a person who has lived experience to lead that workshop. And also just making sure we recognize that storytelling helps victims see their resilience and also seeing what they've been through as a way to help others who are also on the journey. We want them to be to a place where they can not be traumatized by their stories and not traumatize others as well, but also engage in a process to tell their story. We'll also be filming lived experience public service announcements for social media and sharing care coping baskets it is our honor to support victims in their healing process. And we thank you for your support and this recognition. If anyone has any questions, feel free to contact the care line at 645-6248. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ducky, and certainly um, thank you and your team for the work that they do in our community when people are most vulnerable in our community. And I know tonight on, um, on the consent portion of our agenda that um, there will be, um, we'll receive a grant from the National Association of VOCA Assistance Administrators that will come to Columbus Public Health based on the work that you're doing to support victims of crime in our community. So thank you. If there are no questions or comments or from my colleagues, I wanna move for adoption. Second. Thank you. Clark, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Adopt it. Thank you. Um, this still is, April is a Minority Health Month. And I just wanna recognize someone who served as one of the country's pioneers in the field of minority health. And that person is Cheryl A. Boyce. Cheryl served as the Executive Director of the Ohio Commission on Minority Health from its inception in 1986 through the late 20, 2010. The Ohio Commission on Minority Health was created to focus on improving the health status of African Americans, Latino, Hispanic, Asian, and Na Native American Indians. Throughout her life, Cheryl embodied the ongoing commitment to reducing health inequities and the need to promote systemic efforts to improve the social determinants of health. During her 24-year tenure as the Executive Director of the Ohio Commission on Minority Health, she helped 30 plus states replicate the Ohio Commission on Minority Health model. 
She's a pioneer in minority health movement, and she organized its first celebration in 1989. And I also want to say that um, Senator Ray Miller was certainly instrumental in creating this department, um, the commission that Cheryl became the executive director of. So thank you um, for her. I, I thank her for, for the service and thank her family for allowing her to serve our community. I have um, one announcement, two announcements actually. One is that again, Primary One Health special enrollment announcement during Minority Health Month. What we what we continue to learn each month is that access to health care continues to be one of the um, factors that prevent minorities to be getting to be able to have their you know best quality of life in regards to health. And so. Um, the relationship that we have with primary one is critically important that we support primary one in that endeavor. But also I want to share that um, based upon, um, you can now enroll for health insurance from February the 15th to August the 15th. And primary one has certified um, certified application counselors so it can assist you in signing up for Medicaid and the market exchange insurance. To schedule an appointment, dial 614-620-8088. And then uh, lastly, we will hear um, today, as we know that um, vac COVID vaccines are open to everyone. And so um, every Friday, as I mentioned, every Friday, new registrations open at Columbus Public Health. And um, you could either you could call 614-645-6440, or you can go to, on Friday, the Columbus Public Health website, and you will click on COVID-19 COVID vaccines, and you can also register online. And you can get vaccinations Monday through Saturday, um, some Monday from 9 to 4, Tuesday and Wednesdays from 11.30 to 6, Thursday from 9 to 4, Friday 9 to 4, and Saturdays from 9 to 4. Thank you. And that's all I have um, at the beginning of the meeting. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Thank you to all of my, my colleagues. Um, I just have, I guess, what, two announcements or one, one announcement this evening and one just point of order. Uh, first is just a uh, continuation with Councilmember Tyson uh, was just speaking about, which is our vaccination program. Um, as of this afternoon, Columbus Public Health has administered over 123,000 763 vaccinations to residents of Columbus and Worthington across all providers in Franklin County. More than 500,000 individuals have received at least one dose and more than 330,000 have received both doses. That's 25% of uh, the county that have been fully vaccinated. If you are interested in getting your vaccination, uh, please visit uh, Get the shot.coronavirus.ohio.gov or call 614-645-1519. <clears throat> On a more personal note, uh, many of us were informed yesterday that a good community leader and a friend to this council, Bill Anthony and his family suffered a tragic loss. Uh, and uh, this past weekend, his wife, Shay, uh, died in an accident while on vacation. And so I'm just asking that all of us keep uh, their family in our prayers uh, uh, over the next coming weeks and, and months ahead. Are there any comments from uh, our other elected officials? I see Auditor Kilgore. Uh, I see Ms. Clee, Ms. Deb here, um, and Brian Chin. Welcome back to council representing city attorney's office. Um, are there any requests by members of council for the removal of an ordinance resolution from the consent portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we have a motion to weigh the reading of titles of 30-day legislation? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Thank you. Will the clerk now read uh, into the record ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda? Finance Committee, ordinance. This is 784 and 832 2021. Public Safety Committee Ordinances 181, 827, and 887. 
2021 Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 801, 831, 836, 858, and 861 2021 Technology Committee Ordinance 884 2021 Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 840, 868. 902-2021 and Economic Development Committee Ordinance 900-2021. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, seeing no speakers on the uh, uh, first reading, uh, the following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent. Will the clerk now read those ordinances into the record? Resolutions of Expression 63X, 64X, 65X-2021, Finance Committee Ordinances 702, 772, 785, 813, 844, 850, 852, 862, 901-2021, Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinance 899-2021, Public Safety Committee Ordinances 648 and 786-2021, Veterans and Senior Affairs Committee Ordinance 666-2021, Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 717, 738, 746, 756-2021, Neighborhoods Committee Ordinance 975-2021, Technology Committee Ordinance 774-2021, also 806, 826, 905, and 910-2021. Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 749, 755, 767, 793, 804, 817, and 843-2021. Economic Development Committee Ordinance 775-2021. Administration Committee Ordinances 789, 796-2021. Health and Human Services Committee Ordinances 811. 837, 845, 894 2021, and appointments for the mayor's office numbered A0085 and A0086 2021. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any questions or comments uh, from my colleagues on the consent portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may I have a motion of approval of these items as needed consent uh, by voice? Is there a second? Second. Clerk, please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes, with the exception of 0666-2021, on which I'm abstaining. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorrance? Yes. yes. Ms. Faber? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Ms. Tyson? Yes, with the exception of um, A0085-2021, on which I am abstaining. President Hart? Yes. Ordinance are passed. We will now proceed with the second reading of 30-day and table legislation. And the first committee to come before council is the Finance Committee chaired by President Pro Tem. President Pro Tem, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Council President. Um, tonight in finance, we um, are starting with Ordinance 0867-2021 to amend the 2020 capital improvement budget to authorize the city auditor to appropriate and transfer $24,510,000 from the Special Income Tax Fund to the Auditor Bond Fund to authorize the City Auditor to enter into contract with FAST Enterprises, to authorize the City Auditor to enter into contract with such additional vendors as may be necessary for a modern revenue management system, to waive the competitive bidding provisions to enter into such contracts, to provide funding for the implementation support hosting and maintenance of gen tax income tax revenue management system to authorize the appropriation of $24,510,000 in the auditor bond fund to authorize the expenditure of $27 million in the auditor bond fund and to declare an emergency. This ordinance authorizes the city auditor to enter into a contract with FAST enterprises um, in order to implement a modern revenue management system for the city. The new system will provide convenient and secure online options for taxpayers to file returns, to, a view, to view account information, or to make payments, all of which are not currently available in our technology systems. 
The upgrade will also provide more reliable real-time data that improves the workflow, efficiency, and customer service provided by the city auditor and treasurer. Auditor Kilgore, can you um, please talk to us a little more about this investment and the benefits this upgrade will provide both internally for your operations, but also for our residents? I'd be happy to, and good evening. Thank you, Finance Chair Brown. President Hart and members of council, I am delighted to be here finally to ask for your support this evening for this new revenue management system. This system will collect the taxes for income tax, hotel motel tax, emissions tax, and short term rentals. As you know, you know, the revenue system has been one of my highest priorities. Income tax represents about 78% of our general fund. And together with other revenues that we collect, we collect nearly a billion dollars a year. So this is a really large operation. So size-wise, we have to compare ourselves really to a Fortune 500 business. We have over one and a half million accounts and we're growing daily as our population increases and new businesses are on coming online. But here's the thing, our current system cannot grow with us anymore. It is more than 30 years old and it actually contains about 125 separate legacy systems, all of which our good friends, good colleagues at the Department of Technology have to maintain. So with such you know, limited technology with this 30-year-old system, we're simply not able to really advance in anything that we want to do online or what we should do as a smart city. We are really rooted in manual paper-based processes and we found ourselves, you know, frankly, very vulnerable during the pandemic because we were unable to work remotely and continue our revenue operations. But all of this will change in a new system. Our plan is to become the state-of-the-art model for income tax collections, audit, and enforcement, and create immediate value for our companies and organizations that do file things like emissions tax, short-term rental, or hotel motel taxes. So in addition to that, please know you can expect a really easy to use system where every user will have access to their taxpayer portal. We're gonna be really friendly to CPAs as well who might have multiple um, types of clients. Modernized e-filing, the latest security features, and a lot of capabilities for you know, everyone here at the city on really the financial administration side to use when it comes to revenue analytics. Um, more than anything, we want our small businesses to be able to do business in Columbus and our large corporations to come here and want to stay here um, this system is a very frequent and regular touch point with all of our residents and business owners. And so we have to make it more business friendly while also protecting this taxpayer information. So um, I hope my con excitement is conveyed electronically. Um, finally, this you know, really great project is coming to fruition. And thank you very much for your support to date. I would be happy to take any questions at all. Thank you so much, Madam Auditor. Um, I, I appreciate this, um, and I know it's an investment from the city, but I just think more and more, um, if governments are not providing uh, uh, really good online accessibility to people, they're no longer accessible. You know, it, it, is, it is a time um, where we have to meet that threshold for folks, or they simply can't um, access uh, the government that they have every right um, to access with ease. So I appreciate that. Are there any other comments or questions from council? Okay, council member Rini. Thank you, council president Brown. That about auditor, uh, is the rollout uh, in the lead time? How long do you think until citizens are using this uh, in their everyday practice? I appreciate your question, council member Rini. Um, right now we're anticipating a full implementation, a two year time period. And we're working in concert with our colleagues in the Department of Technology. As you can imagine, you know, 30 years of building blocks of a lot of data. Um, our intention is to do a complete shift as quickly as possible. But we want our users, especially um, the individuals who are accessing the system to feel that uh, benefit as soon as possible. Very exciting. And thank you for all the work that you put into this this far. I know it's been a big uh, Big undertaking. Also, um, just a reminder, taxes are due this year for the city. When? We are due on May 17th. We follow in lockstep with the state of Ohio as well as the IRS. Thank you so much. Appreciate all the hard work. Thank you. Any other? 
All right. Well, seeing no other questions or comments, um, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. Um, and I, I don't know if this is happening to anyone else, but since it's so nice out, my neighbors have decided to mow the lawn. So I apologize if there's been like a buzzing in the background during my whole presentation. Um, <laughs> that is the only hazard of this gorgeous weather. So um, next, my final piece of legislation in finance is Ordinance 0904-2021 to authorize the finance and management director to enter into a contract for the option to purchase armored car services with Brinks US to authorize the expenditure of $1 from general budget reservation BRPO 001670 to waive the competitive bidding provisions of city code and to declare an emergency. Um, armored car services are used for the pickup and delivery of currency, bagged coin, uh, checks and documents from various sites by the city and the Franklin County Municipal Clerk. The city treasurer is the primary use of these services and manages them on behalf of the city. The term of the proposed option contract would be one year with five one-year renewal options. Since 2008, Brinks has been the sole applicant for this contract two out of three times the city solicited bids. In 2018, Dunbar was awarded the, con the bid. However, the company was acquired by Brinks in the midst of the contract term. Earlier this year, uh, Treasurer Klee and the purchasing office began negotiations with the other known local armored car service, Loomis. However, those negotiations weren't successful, which left Brinks again as the um, armored service provider locally. This service is critical to the operations of the treasurer. And with that background, that is why we are waiving competitive bidding tonight. Um, an emergency action is being considered because this service is needed immediately for safe and secure transportation of money on our behalf. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you, Council Presidents. Uh, that is all I have in my committees tonight. Thank you, Council Member. The next committee to come before our council is the Public Safety Committee. Councilmember Brown chairs that committee. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you for the council president. Uh, this evening, I have one piece of legislation in public safety and two in the Veterans and Senior Affairs. And I would like, after I do public safety, to have uh, Director Pettis provide some additional information, if it's okay with you, sir. Uh, tonight, I have ordinance 1008 to authorize the directors of the Department of Neighborhoods and the Department of Recreation and Parks to enter into a grant agreement with various social service agencies in support of violence intervention community programming, to authorize an appropriation within the Reimagining Safety Fund, to authorize a transfer and appropriation within the General Fund, to authorize a transfer and appropriation within the Recreation and Parks Operating Fund to authorize expenditures within the general fund and the recreation and parks operating fund and to declare an emergency. During 2020 and the beginning of 2021, violence among young people in Columbus and major cities across the country has risen to epidemic proportions. Violence burdens communities with trauma and leaves a lasting negative impact on communities of health, access to education and economic opportunity. This increase in violence is not attributed to any one factor it is a multifaceted problem. Therefore, we have to address it in a multifaceted manner. This legislation supports a broad range of programming designed to support our young people with safe spaces and trusted adults. This legislation will provide funding for programs at the Columbus Urban League, the Martin DePores Center, Urban Scouts, Community Development for All People, Afrocentric Personal Development Shop, Highland Youth Garden, Legacy Youth Sports Academy, St. Stephen's and New Salem Caring for Community Development Foundation and the Community for New Directions. I know as a champion for this initiative, I'd like to offer Council President to say a few words with regards to these activities with regards to reimagining public safety. Thank you, uh, Chair Brown. I, I am. I'm excited to support this legislation and the programs that community organizations will be able to run 
because of it. Uh, Ordinance 1008-2021 funds 10 community organizations uh, to work with underserved youth this summer. Uh, the legislation funds nonprofit youth programming and anti-violence efforts, including leadership development, entrepreneurship, life skills training, and job placements. Uh, these grants are part of uh, Council's Reimagining Safety Initiative. That effort started last year when Council passed legislation to limit no-knock warrants, to prohibit hate group affiliations, to get military-style weapons off our streets, and to put together a civilian review board. Uh, then council took the time to ensure that we were hearing from residents. We received almost 4,000 survey responses, heard from hundreds through council's town halls, and more than a dozen focus groups were conducted with hard to reach populations. What we did here through the process was that we, that folks uh, wanted more youth work uh, workforce opportunities. We heard that folks wanted to invest in violence and prevention rather than just violence response. Uh, we heard that folks wanted to see more summer programming for our young people. So this legislation today is one more step to follow through on what we heard from our residents. The legislation uh, will support tenant organizations across the city. We estimate that this funding will provide enrichment uh, programming, a job, a workforce training, or more, uh, or more to around 2,500 youth in our city this summer. Let's hear that. 2,500 young people will be engaged because of this, uh, these ordinances. So I want to thank Chair Brown for his support and all of my colleagues uh, for supporting this effort. Every council member uh, touched this process and worked with these organizations. Um, there are a couple of organizations that submitted proposals after the initial group, and we'll be working with, uh, uh, we'll be batting uh, cleanup. Uh, with that organization. So thank you, Council Member Brown, or Chair Brown, and I'll turn the floor back over to you. Thank you, Council President. And you're absolutely accurate in that uh, there are some other agencies that will be addressing their concerns later on uh, with additional legislation. Uh, if there are any comments from my colleagues, or if there are no comments from my colleagues, I move for passage and I ask for a voice vote. Second. Second. Clerk, please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Faber? The same. Mr. Remy? Mm -hmm. Mr. Remy? Yeah, I, yes. Sorry, couldn't hear you. <laughs> uh, Ms. Tyson? Yes. President Harden? Yes. Ordinance is passed. Uh, thank you, Council President. Before I ask for permission to move forward to uh, Veterans Senior Affairs, uh, Director Pettis, would you speak to with some clarity as briefly as possible regarding the Division of Police Aviation Units activities this past Saturday evening? Uh, thank you, Chair Brown, President Hardin, uh, members of Council. Uh, it was reported that the police, Columbus Division of Police helicopter section personnel uh, flew a flight pattern that spelled the letters CPD. The chief of police has been directed to have the incident appropriately addressed. I will ensure that the results of his review is made available to both city council and the mayor's office and will include an outline of any corrective actions undertaken. Uh, to provide you with a brief summary of what has been determined at this point, I have asked Commander Robert Sagel to be with us this evening, and he may also be able to answer some of the questions that you might have. With your permission, and if Commander Sagel was able to join us, uh, he is welcome to speak now. Thank you, Director Pettis, Council Member Brown, Council President Hardin, and all other members of Council. I am Commander Rob Sagel, and I oversee the Aviation Section of the Columbus Division of Police. I wanted to briefly address the incident that Director Pre uh, Pettis just spoke of that occurred over the weekend. I would first like to apologize for the time and attention this has caused when the city has much more important things to focus on. I also don't want uh, to take away from the great work achieved by the members of the helicopter unit on a daily basis. We continue to review the flight pattern, but know that the helicopter took off for the regularly scheduled patrol flight at approximately 12.03 a.m. 
and that flight was to be one and a half hours in duration. The pilot uh, navigated throughout the city during the patrol flight and responded on several high priority runs, including a shoot, uh, I'm sorry, a stabbing and an assault in progress. During time between dispatched runs, the pilot flew a pattern which spelled out CPD when later viewed on a flight tracking application. This took less than 10 minutes and was conducted at normal patrol altitude. No calls for service were missed during this time and no additional fuel was utilized. The helicopter unit strives to fly neighborly and works hard each day to assist patrol on high priority runs and crimes of violence. We look forward to continuing this work in partnership with patrol officers and the citizens of Columbus. Commander Sagal, uh, I assume that there will be a review and that review will be forwarded on to the Chief of Police and subsequently forwarded on to the Director once it is complete. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. If there are no questions from my colleagues at this particular time, uh, I see Councilmember Brown. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Councilmember. I just thank you, Commander Sagal, for being here. I just want to um, ask one thing in your review, um, if I could respectfully. I, I um, was appreciative of the um, division's comments over the weekend to clarify that you'll be reviewing the flight path, um, and I and I just want to emphasize the use of um, the term, you know, less than ten minutes. Um, because it was one in the morning and um you know i i learned a lot from you all last year about the flight path and and the helicopter flies low that's the that's the air clearance we've been given because um you know that's regulated by the faa and the flight path is meant to keep moving unless there's an incident that is being responded to and um to sort of uh, stop that flight path and even if it's less than 10 minutes at one in the morning kind of do a roundabout circular situation over a neighborhood is really disruptive even at less than 10 minutes so um you know my respectful request would be uh to uh really focus on on that more than um noting that the the time was a mere under 10 minutes because um i'm usually asleep at 1 a.m and i would be not only woken up, but also um, a little bit alarmed that something was happening in my neighborhood to hear that for that long. Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Uh, I do want to kind of clarify, though, you made the statement fly low. Uh, in between runs, uh, we returned to an altitude of 1,500 feet, uh, which is um, substantially higher than when we're down on a run, uh, attempting to basically conduct some sort of a uh, surveillance or watching or looking for something. So this was done back up above 1500 feet, uh, which is what we consider like where we are attempting to fly neighborly, creating much less noise than if we're dropping down into the 1200 feet range coming three to 400 feet lower. Okay, okay. thank you. I think what I confused is there's hospital helicopters that are the highest and news helicopters yeah. below that and we're below that, right? It's similarly, yeah, I, I mean, there, there's no particular order, but we typically fly just below them and then okay. they'll fly about 500 feet higher than us. Okay. And that's more to control the air traffic. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's no other questions or comments from my colleagues. Chair Brown, just- uh, Thank you very, very much, Chief. Uh, Director Pettis and Commander Schlegel. Uh, and again, for our, all your work, it is appreciated. But again, we would like to see the review once it is complete. I believe uh, Mr. Dorns might have had something. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed that. I don't see Rob. Rob, I'm sorry. I apologize. No problem, Chair Brown. Uh, Commander, real quick, and again, I think we talked about this this last summer, but I wanted an opportunity for, for us as a body just to, to talk about this. It's my understanding that the standard operating procedure for the unit is you know, if you're not responding to a to a current run, it's to you know, avoid residential areas uh, if possible. Is, is that a fair assessment? We try our hardest to. Obviously, it's the city of Columbus. Sure. Uh, what we try to do is stay mainly over major thoroughfares. And, you know, it's not only part of flying neighborly, but it's also uh, the safest routes, you know, bigger, wider open areas, uh, just in case there was some sort of a emergency uh, that took place where we needed it to make a forced landing. Right. Thank you. 
if there are, again, I apologize, Rob, I didn't see you. Um, if there are no additional questions, um, thank you very, very much. And uh, Council President, may I move on to Senior and Veterans Affairs? Please. Please. Uh, tonight, I also have Ordinance 0667-2021 to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter into a contract with Life Care Alliance for the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. We authorize the expenditure of up to $226,081 from the Record Parks Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. This evening, we have with us uh, the Director of the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging, Ohio AAA, Cindy Farson. Cindy, the floor is yours, dear. <laughs> Thank you, President Hardin, Chair Brown, and Council members. Um, this is a very popular program, the Senior Farmers Market, that we've been operating for a while in, in a partnership with Life Care Alliance. Uh, we served about 5,500 people last year, and um, we hope to uh, serve some more this year. It provides $50 of produce coupons um, to individuals. Uh, and it's very timely. Applications are being accepted now online on the Life Cares website uh, or by mail or fax. Um, because of the pandemic last year, we switched from people visiting markets to um, delivering produce boxes. Uh, and we're going to do that again this year. That begins in July. And so fruits, vegetables, and honey are delivered to the individuals um, at, along with instructions on how to cook and freeze vegetables. Um, it's a, a little more labor intensive, but uh, folks from both of our organizations and lots of volunteers show up uh, for packing and delivery days. So uh, we hope people will uh, apply for that. It's a wonderful thing to get that produce and a, a healthy addition to people's diets. Thank you, Cindy. And again, to all the folks at CO Tripway, thank you for the hard work and engagement with our seniors. It's appreciated. If there are no additional questions, I move for passage and I ask for a voice vote. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. By Ms. voice. Brown, uh, Ms. Brown. Abstain. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorrance. Yes. Ms. Faber. Yes. Mr. Remy. Yes. Mr. Last order I have this evening, sir, is 0797-2021 fund to authorize the Director of Recreation and Parks to increase various contracts for passport, home care, and assisted living services, and to declare an emergency. Again, this is activity for our senior citizens. As everyone is aware, uh, if there are no questions, I move for passage and I ask for a voice vote. Is there a second? Second. Clerk, please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown. Abstain. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Dorans. Yes. Ms. Faber. Yes. Mr. Remy. Yes. Ms. Tyson. <laughs> yes. President Hart. Yes, ordinance is passed. That's all I have this evening, sir. And thank you, Councilman Remy. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the next committee to come before council is the Utilities Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilman Dorans. Councilman Rudd, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Hardin. Um, tonight in the Public Utilities Committee, I have ordinance number 0818-2021 to authorize the Director of Public Utilities to renew the Professional Engineering and Services Agreement with Black and Beach Corporation for the Hapkermeen Water Plant Intake Structure and Low Head Dam Rehabilitation Project for the Division of Water to authorize a transfer and expenditure of up to $1,589,300 within the uh, Water General Obligation Bond Fund to amend the 2020 Capital Improvement Budget and to declare an emergency. Um, this project will address aging infrastructure necessary for maintaining our drinking water supply at the Hapkermeen water, uh, water Plants. Um, emergency, legisla emergency legislation is needed to help ensure that this project stays on schedule. Um, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. 
Thank you. Next, we have ordinance number 0830-2021. They're authorized the Director of Public Utilities to enter in a construction contract with Cocosine Industrial Inc. for the half Cremine Plant Intake Structure and Low Head Dam Improvements Project in an amount of up to $11,103,250 to encumber $2,000 for prevailing wage services, services provided by the Department of Public Service to authorize the appropriation and transfer of $11,103,250 from the Water System Reserve Fund to the Water Supply Revolving Loan Fund Account Fund to authorize the appropriation of expenditure of $11,103,250 within the Water Supply Revolving Loan Account Fund to authorize expenditure of $2,000 within the Water General Obligation Voted Bond Fund for the Division of Water to authorize amendment to the 2020 Capital Improvements Budget and to declare an emergency. Um, this project will also address even infrastructure associated with the hap water plants low head dam and intake structure uh, that has experienced normal wear and tear related to age uh, emergency legislation um, is requested to keep the construction work aligned with the seasonal water plant uh, production requirements and seasonal creek flow considerations that impact work within this area uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments seeing none i move for passage Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Pass. Uh, Council President, with your permission, may I move on to the Technology Committee? Please. Thank you, sir. I'm going to have ordinance number 0725 2021 to authorize the Director of the Department of Technology to enter into contract with Veritai Corporation for annual maintenance and related services associated with the uninterrupted power supply systems in accordance with sole source provisions of the Columbus City Code to authorize the director of the Department of Technology to enter into contract with Veritai Corporation for heating, cooling, and ventilation systems and various equipment maintenance to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code to authorize expenditure of $203,192.31 from the Department of Technology Information Services Division, Information Services Operating Fund, and to declare an emergency. Uh, although maintenance services for UPS systems are available from other suppliers, uh, Veritai Corporation is the only factory authorized uh, service provider for the equipment used at city data centers. Uh, given the critical need for reliable uh, power systems at city data centers, it is in the city's best interest to contact directly with this vendor. Uh, as such, this ordinance is being submitted in accordance with the provisions of the sole source procurement of the Columbus City Code Chapter 329. Emergency action is requested to uh, expedite authorization of the contract in order to facilitate and maintain uninterrupted services from the supplier. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any questions or comments? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Passed. And thank you, Council President. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the next committee to come before Council is the Public Service Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Favors. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President Harden. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation, we have Ordinance 0764-2021 to amend the 2020 Capital Improvements Budget to authorize and direct the City Auditor to appropriate and transfer funds from the Special Income Tax Fund to the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to appropriate funds within the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to transfer cash and appropriation within the Streets and Highways Bond Fund, to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into contract with Shelley and Sands Incorporated for the resurfacing 2021 project, to authorize the expenditure of up to $8,506,652.26 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund for the project and to declare an emergency. This ordinance is the first resurfacing project for 2021 the contract includes repairing and resurfacing 64 streets and constructing 157 ADA curb ramps along those streets. The work consists of milling the existing pavement, overlaying with new asphalt concrete, and replacing curb and sidewalk associated with installing ADA wheelchair ramps. Where warranted, the plans also call for the areas of full depth pavement repair. This project also includes the removal of existing parking meter posts in designated areas and the installation of concrete foundations for the installation of parking kiosk and other work as may be necessary to complete the contract. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. 
Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. Up next, we have 0838-2021 to authorize the director of the Department of Finance and Management to enter into contract with the Ohio Department of Transportation and yet to be named vendors for the purchase of rock salt based on the terms of a cooperative purchase contract to be established by the Ohio Department of Transportation to authorize the director of finance and management to establish purchase orders for rock salt to authorize an expenditure of up to one million seven hundred sixty thousand dollars from the municipal motor vehicle license tax fund up to twenty two thousand eight hundred eighty dollars from the sewage systems operating fund and up to $64,240 from the Water Systems Operating Fund and $4,400 from the Electricity Systems Operating Fund for the purchase of rock salt to authorize the Director of Finance and Management to associate all general budget reservations resulting from this ordinance with the appropriate contract purchase agreement for rock salt and to declare an emergency. This ordinance allows the city to contract with ODOT for the winter cooperative purchasing contract for the purchase of Rock salt. The rock salt will be used in the 2021-2022 winter season for snow and ice removal. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Does anybody know how many times I said rock salt? <laughs> Six. Remember, I have a question. Yes. Uh, it's supposed to snow uh, oh. on Wednesday morning. <laughs> All right, do we have enough rock salt, uh, <laughs> Director Wenzel, uh, to keep our city safe? Uh, thank you, President Harden, um, uh, Chair Faber. Yes, we still have plenty of rock salt from leftover last year's winter season. I guess we're still in this year's winter season. I believe we probably have uh, roughly 20 some thousand tons in our barns still. Um, we try to purchase roughly with, with purchasing it as well as what we have in our barns. Barns is about 40,000 tons of salt a year. So we still have about 20,000 tons. So we're good to go for the snow event coming this week. Thank you, Director. Uh, are there any other questions? Seeing none, I'm okay. Like oh, we'll like keep an extra amount. That's all. That's all that's all about. <laughs> I move for passage. Seconds. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. Council President, may we move on to housing? Please. Thank you. We have ordinance 0683-2021 to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into a grant agreement with the Legal Aid Society of Columbus in an amount up to $400,000 in support of the tenant advocacy project to provide legal representation to residents facing an eviction to authorize a transfer of funds between the Basic City Services Fund and the General Fund to authorize an appropriation in the general fund to the Department of Development to authorize the expenditure of $400,000 in the Department of Development and to declare an emergency. Tenants with legal representation are much more likely to avoid an eviction judgment and keep possession of their homes than unrepresented tenants. In addition to these primary effects, a right to counsel offers several secondary benefits to defendants who are sued for eviction. Attorneys may be able to keep eviction filings off tenants' records arrange for alternative housing, negotiate reasonable amounts of time for tenants to move out, or reduce and eliminate money owed to the landlord or help tenants apply for rental assistance. With COVID-19 uh, causing financial insecurity for many residents of Columbus, eviction filings are rising, and the court is expected to see an increase in eviction hearings for the remainder of 2021. With these grant dollars, the Legal Aid Society of Columbus will be able to staff an additional four TAP attorneys for the remainder of the 2021 calendar year. Are there any questions or comments by my colleagues? Yes, Council Member Brown. Just very quickly to say thank you to you um, for this work, um, which I know you're always focused on, but I think this is really transformational stuff. And um, you know, I appreciate that you have brought this again to us as I know you did last year um, because it makes such a difference in people's lives. So just to thank you. Thank you, Council Member Brown. And I would be remiss if we didn't give a shout out to uh, the Legal Aid Society for the work that they continue to do down at eviction court. Uh, we truly appreciate their partnership and collaboration. Uh, for residents that did not know, there were 
Uh, we did this program last year, five attorneys uh, down at eviction court helping residents out every day. So thank you to our, the Legal Aid Society and all of our housing advocates and partners uh, that continue to provide the best service uh, for residents facing evictions. Um, and then also shout out to uh, Director Stevens and uh, the folks at the Department of Development that uh, continue to uh, ensure that rental assistance is being made available. Director Stevens, did you have any comments to make? I have nothing to add. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Uh, with that, I move for adoption. I'm sorry, passage. Second. Clerk, because please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. That's all I have in my committees. Uh, thank you, Council Member. Uh, the next and final committee to come before Council is the Health and Human Services Committee, chaired by Council Member Tyson. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you. I have ordinance number 747-2021, um, and it's to authorize the Board of Health to accept a reproductive health and wellness program grant from the Ohio Department of Health and to authorize the appropriation of $1,590,000 in grant money and fee revenues from the unappropriated balance of the Health Department's grants fund and to declare an emergency. This grant would be um, $990,000 would come from the Ohio Department of Health and the other $600,000 would be program fees and revenues that will be anticipated. The Women's Health and Wellness Center at Columbus Public Health provides award-winning reproductive health and wellness services for diverse women, men, and adolescents, particularly those desiring confidential services and or without health insurance. These services include a special focus on providing highly effective contraception as part of the overall strategy to promote safe birth spacing and support infant mortality reduction strategies. Columbus Public Health serves as the lead agency in Franklin County for this program. In addition, to the clinical program, the Women's Health Leadership provides training for other reproductive health and wellness providers as a center for excellence to further advance reproductive health services throughout Ohio. In 2021, the training program will expand to include topics related to cultural competency, cultural competency and anti-racism program programming. Last year, the program completed 8,336 visits, provided nearly 500 IUDs and implants, and, and performed more than 33,000 HIV tests and 100 cervical cancer screenings. In 2020, the program implemented telehealth and HIV prep services. The funding also supports existing community-based models of care for special populations from sites from sites such as Comp Drug, the Franklin County based correction facility, and Sanctuary Night for survivors of human tra trafficking. Further plans for 2021 include community health services on a custom mobile health unit at expanded locations. Um, over the last 12 months, anticipate participation in the program has increased dramatically with 56% more value over 2019. They have same day contraceptive services. Well, well Woman um, Exam and Preventive Health Care, PAP, HP, HPV Testing Referral for Mammograms, and um, Preconception pre Health Services, Reproductive Life Planning, and Pregnancy um, Testing. They do screening, treatment, education of sexually transmitted infections, social service linkages, assisting, including assistance with insurance enroll enrollment, as well as community um, outreach, education, and telehealth, mobile health. And for more information, contact Joe Taylor at 614-645-3569. Um, Anita, um, who was here representing Columbus Public Health, are there any other comments on this legislation? Hi, thank you so much, Council Member Tyson and um, President Harden and members of Council. We, you have summed it up greatly. Um, our clinic has worked very hard during COVID and we're very excited to get our mobile unit, which we hope that we can get out on the road um, and help us with the COVID vaccination out, as well as continue our women's health um, programming. So thank you so much um, for everything that you've done as well. And we look forward for this, uh, this additional grant money. So thank you. Thank you. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Thank you. Thank you.
Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is Ordinance 770-2021, and it is um, to authorize a transfer of CARES Act funds from the Department of Development's Division of Housing to the Division of Administration to weigh the competitive bidding requirements of Columbus City Code Chapter 329 to authorize a Director of Development to execute a professional services contract with Canvas Consulting LLC in an amount up to 445 thousand four hundred and forty five thousand dollars for the purpose of implementing COVID-19 vaccine campaign and, um, and to authorize expenditure up to four hundred and forty five thousand dollars from the CARES Act fund to authorize the payment of expenses beginning February the 1st of 2021 and to declare an emergency. Um, I am first going to ask um, Director Stevens to make some comments on this legislation, and then I'm going to ask Anita from Columbus Public Health to add additional comments. So, Director Stevens, um, could you please add comments regarding this legislation and us to also, again, why we are waiving competitive bidding? Thank you, President Hardin, Chair Tyson, members of City Council. Uh, the city has worked with Canvas Consulting to do a um, a targeted multimedia campaign, initially uh, encouraging people to take the proper mitigation steps to slow the spread of the COVID virus. Um, this legislation is continuing that work, but really focused on how to uh, encourage people to take uh, to register and get the vaccine now that they're more available. Uh, we're going to utilize trusted community voices and influencers to help bring validation to the message. Uh, it's a, like I said earlier, it's a multi-layered media approach, engaging local partners to help extend the message through digital media and advertising. Um, as I said at the beginning of my remarks, Canvas was uh, the entity we used earlier, uh, end of 2020, beginning of this year, uh, to encourage uh, folks to appropriately uh, gather during the holidays and, and, and slow the spread. So that is why we are waiving competitive bidding. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Director Stevens. And so will this be, um, certainly we recognize the individuals who are not willing to take the vaccine or has well, some, some vaccine hesitancy. Will this be a really a targeted campaign? Well, we, we want everyone to take it, but we also, for those individuals who we know um, we're having uh, much more, have more hesitancy to take it, will this be also campaign target some of those individuals? Uh, yes, Chair Tyson, it will. And that's why we're, it's really important that we get those trusted community voices to participate in that and, and, and make sure people in the community are comfortable not only hearing from their neighbors and people they trust uh, that it is safe and reliable and it's the right thing to do to uh, really open back up our uh, city and our economy. Thank you, uh, Director Stevens. Anita, would you like to make any additional comments? Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Councilmember Tyson. Um, I just wanted to add that we have been working so very hard on trying to get vaccination out into our community. As we know, we went purple this past week. So that just tells us even, you know, we need to work even harder to get the vaccine out into our community. So we really look forward to this campaign. Um, I think that, you know, at our hardest work is yet to come because I think that hesitancy, we really need to be. Uh, communicating well to our community that, that any kind of doubt or hesitation, we need to get over that hurdle. But we really see this the next few weeks very challenging. So we're looking very much forward to this campaign. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Clark. And thank you, Director Stevens. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Clark, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. That concludes the legislation and health and human services. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, you know, for the business to come for a council, may I have, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Meeting is adjourned. Uh, Chair Tyson, you want to move or do five minutes? Just five. Five. Right, we'll take a five minute break and we'll yeah. go into zoning. Right. Thank you.
there's six counts of groups. I'm missing one count of Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? So moved. Second. Clark, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. We will now go to the zoning committee. Uh, Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee, and all members serve. One Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right. Will the clerk now read the ordinance numbers on tonight's agenda and to the record? 848-2021-864-865-874-880-881-882-883-885-889-2021. Thank you. I will now move to weigh the, sec weigh the second reading on each. Thank right, you. Clark, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Waived. Thank you. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I'll briefly explain the rules of council as pertaining to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents and three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side, and we provide an opportunity for, for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, Anyone who wishes to speak either for or against any council variance, including staff, um, must be sworn in prior to giving testimony. We do so prior to beginning the, the reading of each variance on the agenda. Anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. So the first ordinance is 848-2021 to grant a variance from, for, from the provisions of sections 3332.035 R3 residential district and 3332.13 R3 area district requirements 3332.25B maximum side yards required and 3332.26 minimum side yard permitted and 3332.27 rear yard for the property located at 847 Franklin Avenue to permit two single unit dwellings on one lot with reduced development standards in the R3 residential district. The applicant is Juliet Bull Bullock Architects, represented by Julie Bullock. The proposed use is two single unit dwellings on one lot. The City Department's recommendation is approval, and the Near East Air Commission's recommendation was approval um, 12 to zero. I just want to, before we move forward with this, I want to just share that um, today we received, um, I'm probably about what well, we received four letters 
from individuals in this community that so they were opposed to um, putting uh, multiple dwellings on one lot. And it came from Dennis Trucks, Dean Cox, uh, Matthew Fennin, and, um, and sorry, Emily, uh, Emily and Tom Preto. So I just want to make sure I share that information. But again, this was approved by the Air Commission um, 12 to 0. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Again. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 864-2021 to resolve 359 East Markison being 0.61 acres located at the southwest corner of East Markison Avenue and, the, and South Washington Avenue from the R2F Residential District to the AR1 Apartment Residential District. The applicant is Manning 569 Holdings um, LLC and represented by attorney David Hodge. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The C department's recommendation is approval and the Columbus South Site Air Commission's recommendation is also approval at 14 to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. Anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. Have ordinance number 865-2021. This is, um, again, the... Um, this is a variance, just one with the previous zoning, to grant a variance provisions of sections 3333.02 AR, AR12, ARLD, and AR1 apartment residential district use, 3312.49C, minimum numbers of parking spaces required, 3321.05B2, vision clearance, and 3333.15C, basis of computing error area, 3333.18 building lines and 3333.255 perimeter yard of the Columbus Sea Codes for property located at 359 East Markison Avenue and to permit single a single a single unit and three unit dwellings off-site um, residential parking and reduced development standards in the AR1 apartment residential district. The applicant is Manning 569 Holdings LLC, care of attorney David Hodge. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Columbus South Site Air Commission's recommendation is approval 14 to zero. Again, if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is ordinance um, um, 874-2021 to, to rezone 2900 Cassie Avenue being 1.182 acres located in the west side of North Cassie Avenue, 280 feet north of Airport Drive from the LCR, LC4 resident limited commercial district to the CPD commercial plan development district. The applicant is Skill Can Gold Development LLC, care of Sarah Gold. The proposed use is fuel sales, convenience store, and eating and drinking establishment. The C department's recommendation is approval and the Northeast Air Commission's recommendation was also approval. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Clerks, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 880-2021. It is to rezone 4836 Cleveland Avenue being 4.38 acres located at the southeast corner of Cleveland Avenue and Britton Woods Drive from the C4 Commercial District to the ARLD Apartment Residential District. The applicant is National Church Residences, care of attorney Matthew Berlin. The um, proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The C Department's recommendation is approved and the Northland Community Council's recommendation is approval 1501. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Passed. 
Thank you. The next ordinance is 881, which is a variance for the previous legislation, is to grant a variance. Oh, anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Um, please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. Have ordinance 881-2021 to grant a variance from provisions of sections 3309.14 height district and 3312.49 C minimum numbers of parking spaces required, 3333.18 building lines, the Columbus codes were probably located at 4836 Cleveland Avenue, and to permit reduced development standards for a multi-unit residential development in the ARLD apartment residential district. The applicant again is National church residences and care of attorney Matthew Berlin. The um, proposed use is a multi-unit development. The C department's recommendations approval and the Northern Community Council recommendations 1501. Wait a minute. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Again. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 882-2021 to rezone 2337 North Cassidy Avenue, being 11.46 acres located on the west side of North Cassidy Avenue, 560 feet south of Agler Road from the AR-12 and the ARLD Apartment Residential Districts to the LAR-1 Limited Apartment Residential District. The applicant is Metro Development LLC, the proposed use as a multi-unit residential development. The C Department's recommendation is approval and the Northwest Air Commission's recommendation was also approval. This is care of attorney uh, Jeff Brown. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, Tyson, President Hart. Pass. Thank you. And the component variance um, is 883-2021. But if there's anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. Jeff, so this or 883-2021 is to grant a variance from, provision, from the provisions of sections 3333.18 building lines of the Columbus Code for the property located at 2337 North Cassie Avenue to permit a reduced building line for an apartment complex in the LAR1 Limited Apartment Residential District. The applicant is Metro Development LLC, care of Jeff Brown, attorney Jeff Brown. The proposed use is a multi-unit residential development. The State Department's recommendation is approval and the Northeast Air Commission's recommendation is also approval. If there are no questions or comments, I move for passage. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. Well. Thank you. This is ordinance um, 885-2021 to grant a variance from the provisions of section 3356.03C for permitted uses, 3312.49C minimum numbers of parking spaces required, 3312.51 loading spaces, and 3312.53 minimum number of loading spaces required of the Columbus C codes for property located at 2114 IKEA Way to permit ground floor residential uses with reduced development standards in the CPD commercial plan development um, district. The applicant is, is um, NPFG LLC, the care of, a, of a Dave Perry. The proposed use is a ground floor, res ground floor residential uses. The C department's recommendation is also is approval. The North Far North Columbus Communities Coalition recommendation is approval at eight to zero. Um, if there are no questions or comments, I first amend as submit to the clerk. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Amended. Thank you. And now I move for, um, for passage as amended. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. 
Thank you. Anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against this council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, be sworn in, and I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. Um, uh, this is ordinance number 889-2021 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3356.03 C4 permitted uses and 3356.11 C4 district setback lines of Columbus Sea Codes were properly located at 1696 Parsons Avenue to conform an existing single unit dwelling with a reduced building setback in the C4 commercial district. The applicant is Benjamin Jackson. The proposed use is to conform an existing single unit dwelling. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Columbus South Site Air Commission's recommendation was also approval at 15 to zero. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Hart. Passed. Thank you and that concludes the zoning agenda for this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. So no further business coming before the zoning committee. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have two non-agenda speakers this evening. Um, the first non-agenda speaker is Abby Vap Va uh, from uh, speaking on the Community uh, Bill of Rights.